Hello, Guardians. Good to see you again. Been a while. Well, there hasn't been much to write home about Destiny for a while, but now we've got something to talk about. Warmind. Bungie today, in a special stream, showed off the game for an hour and talked content. I'm gonna go ahead and take a wild guess that you don't have an hour to sit down and watch it, so I'll do my best to sum it all up for you. This is the second DLC for D2, and it's dropping on May 8th. It'll include new exotic weapons, new armor, a new story campaign, a new kind of open world event, as well as new Crucible maps and a reworking of most of the exotic weapons. There will also be new ranks for Crucible and rewards. You can also expect to see seasonal progression with vendors. Let's tackle story first. Warmind will take you to Mars, which is the birthplace of the Golden Age supercomputer, Rasputin. If you're up on your lore, you'll know that Warmines were created by the Clovis Bray Corporation, and they're among the most powerful weapons in the solar system, with Rasputin being the biggest and baddest of them all. The new Guardian being introduced with the new DLC is none other than Anna Bray of the Clovis Bray Corporation. She's been resurrected as a Guardian, and from the cinematic Bungie has released, We've learned that she's bending the rules a little bit and investigating her past life. You'll recall that Guardians are resurrected with no memories, but it looks like Anna's found out who she was, and that'll definitely play a factor in the story. I like this direction because hopefully we'll get to learn more about the Guardians' code. And what better way to learn about rules than by breaking a few of them? Bungie in the stream did not release a ton of story details other than the names of a few locations and who you'll be fighting, a uh, so-called Frozen Hive. You see, under the icy surface of Mars are several hive ships, which you can see clearly from this shot. My guess is they're after Rasputin, and it's your job to stop them. Fan reactions have been pretty tepid to fighting what basically looks like reskinned hive, and I tend to agree. Unless there's a significant difference to how the combat feels, I think they've opened themselves up to criticism they could have otherwise avoided. Should have debuted a new enemy type here, just saying guys. Now they did not let on how long the campaign is, so we'll just have to wait to see, uh, but they did say that Anna will be your companion in the story, as well as your vendor. We don't get to see her in-game, so we can't tell just yet if she's only a quest dispenser and vendor, or if she'll fight alongside you at any point. Okay, next let's talk about the new mode, Escalation Protocol. This is a horde mode that you can only activate after having beaten the campaign. Now you can join a fight in progress like any public event, but they've upped the difficulty so you'll probably get wrecked if you jump straight in. Here's a breakdown on how it works. You flip the switch, and waves of hive will be drawn to your location. There are seven rounds in all, with a boss spawning at the very end. There will be a different boss each day, as well as specific loot drops you can only get from that boss. Chests with loot will spawn at the end of waves 3 and 5. Now while you're fighting, you can earn armory codes, which are tokens that allow you to buy a new weapon to use on tougher waves. This new weapon is called the Valkyrie, and it's a spear that deals high damage and can be used either as a projectile or as a melee weapon. Speaking of melee weapons, the Hive Sword is making a comeback from D1, so... Ready for that! Of course, there will be new cosmetic items as well as some new emotes and an emote wheel with the release of the DLC. Now, I'll say here that there will be changes available for all players when Warmind comes out, including those emotes and the emote wheel, but the most noticeable changes will come with the Crucible and changes to exotic weapons. There are two new ranks in Crucible, Glory and Valor. Valor is based on matches played, and you will rank up faster if you win. Glory rank is for competitive mode, and that goes up if you win and down if you lose. There will be specific rewards for maxing out your rank, as well as specific challenges. You can even reset your rank and regrind for more loot. Now let's dive into the exotic weapons next. Based off of feedback and playtesting, the devs have reworked a number of the weapons. Uh, they didn't announce them all during the stream, so I'll just go over the ones they talked about. The Fighting Lion is getting a buff, with better detonations, and kills will now spawn ammo. The Graviton Lance is getting a big old buff with a change to a two round burst, with the second shot being extra powerful. Risk Runner will absorb more arc damage and it's now enabled in PvP. You can use the Arc Overdrive perk. It'll also proc even if it's on your back, but you need to have it equipped if you want the arc damage resistance. Skyburner's Oath will fire more explosive rounds and in hip fire the projectiles will fly slower and will heat seek targets. The devs recommend using it with a Warlock to glide over enemies and rain down Hellfire. Hardlight is getting a buff for its ricocheting. Bullets that bounce off walls now will deal double damage. The Crimson will be getting more ammo, and in PvP it's getting retuned slightly to be more competitive. The Sturm and Drang are also getting a tweak. Uh, get a kill with the Drang and you will automatically reload the Sturm and add a bonus round to the magazine. When Sturm gets overloaded, 
rounds uh, 12 through 20 will get a buff. So don't sweat it if you miss that powered up shot. Now each season, they're going to add one gun that in their words will be the quote, chase. So the meta weapon for Crucible. In season three, it'll be this one, Redrick's Claymore. Its perk, Desperado, will increase rate of fire, but will not lower impact. All right, that covers all the exotic changes. Now let's talk brand new weapons and gear coming with Warmind. Bungie have released images, but not disclosed the perks. But let's take a look. First, we have the Worm Husk Crown. Next, the Worm God Caress. That sounds lovely. The Oculus Zoll. The Huckleberry. Suros Regime. Sealed Ahamkara Grasps. Sanguine Alchemy. Ophidia Spathe. Frost EE5. Eternal Warrior. Claws of Ahamkara. Ashen Wake. Armenterarium. <laughs> I have no idea if I'm saying that right. And Apotheosis Veil. Vale. Alright, that'll cover it. Based on what I've seen so far, it looks like this update will bring enough to get most casual players back, uh, back on to sample it, but I still have misgivings about where D2 is going. A new update is coming in September that will bring back randomization and rerolling weapons, which is a great idea, but I feel like many of you probably do that some crucial momentum for the game has been lost after launch. The September updates will be great for D1 Guardians and more hardcore players, but I don't see D2 recapturing the spotlight this go around. We may have to wait to D3 to truly get that Earth dominating game we've all been hoping for. Alright, there you go, Guardians. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please check out the rest of my channel uh, for more gaming videos. You can also find me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, just search around for Alex Plays. Or check the link in the description for, uh, for all of those. All right, thanks again so much for watching. Please let me know what you think, and uh, yeah, we will see you next time. All right, until then, happy hunting, Guardians.